I'm about to leave for Ottawa to visit my family. I'm very excited and I have some books to finish, like 31 still, but it's down from 39 at the beginning of the month, but I'm choosing to only bring four and this is pretty good for me. The Anne Christine reviewed Weather by Sarah Garcia and Herland by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. These are all books that I really, really need to finish. Two of them I need to finish for that and two of them I'm really excited and think could be top books of the year, but I would like to finish them by the end of the year. I finished, started both of them in the summer and then I haven't read them yet. So this is, this is something that I've like enjoyed every line of the things that I've written so far in these and you know, four books. Four books, ten days, and mostly talking to family. I'm sure I'll get them all done when you're chilling with your girl. I love her so much. And, 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 and I have another one, which I got in 2008. <laughs> I think both of them are actually my sisters, but my sister became a minimalist and doesn't actually like dolls anymore. So there you go. We're, we're chilling together. Like my mother collects spoons. A 1980s movie <laughs> slash thing. So I just filmed and it actually it's surprisingly good contrast so I don't actually have to be afraid to film here anymore which is very interesting. It is the room my sister grew up in. I have not done any reading. I have spent here a day. I just filmed a Friday reads which was really exciting. Hi, yeah, those are my books that I have. Guys, guys, it's Spider-Man day. I am so psyched. I've been waiting for this for so long. I love Spider-Man so much. It is December 18th. It is like officially a day after but we know it's two days. I've avoided most spoilers. I'm really excited to see Tom Holland. I'm really excited to see if there's anything else but if there isn't I'm, I'm okay. You probably know better than I do but I'm so excited. The really sad thing is that I have been working on a video with Spider-Man since the last Spider-Man we came out. I like loved it so much. It's probably my favorite video all. I'm reading through 60s comics and I'm making fun of them and just like going through and I love it and I've done that with lots of comics since but I have so much pressure about this that I was like okay this is filming from like 2019 on it and all of this and I'm like okay now when I come home from this when I'm no longer at my parents house I am going to be finishing this video and then we can talk about Spider-Man, how hilarious he is, and it's gonna be wonderful. I am so ridiculously happy. I have no words. Like, dang, that was so great. And like, I was so worried it was not going to be like great or that it was somehow going to remove the greatness that I don't think I fully enjoyed it, but I'm so excited to rewatch it at some point. Like, dang, it just, it had everything I loved and it was so well done. And like, I don't think there's a moment in which like I was not loving it other than the moments where I was like, obviously they're not going to want to like do this fully because it's going to be too expensive or too hard so obviously it's going to be limited but no so so good I don't always make great decisions when it comes to sleep, but I do always stay up to 3 a.m. to watch finales of the Marvel shows because they're so dang good. I am so excited for Hawkeye. I am writing assignments. This is my last day to hand in papers. It's been a great week. I went to a Christmas light thing with my family and my nephews who are adorable and it was lovely. I have piles of homework to still finish and assignments to do. The presentation I was really stressed with, I actually got 100% on, which I was really shocked. I do not get 100% often. Because of my health, I got the option to record it ahead of time. And the only note was like, oh, it's great. It's creative. It's wonderful. Loves the content. But did you speed it up? Because you talk real fast. And I was like, no, man, that's just the way I talk. I'm feeling better about handing these assignments in. I'm feeling really great about watching Hawkeye. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. I'm really excited. I got salad to counteract the fact that it's 3 a.m. because that's how things work. I'm free until January 12th and I could not be more excited. I have spent a lot of time writing about the queens, as in the queens. Who do I don't have to say the man because we all know who we're talking about. My favorite way to study or write exams or papers or any of that is always to listen to musicals. I find it really good. So I started with Hades Town and I was listening to a little bit of The Great Comet, which I absolutely loved. I listened to it for like probably two or three days straight. And then I was listening to The Six and I was like, I fell down so many rabbit holes of researching and the first book after 10 days, I don't think it's been like 10 days without reading like a single page other than for school. And I started Wolf Hall and I'm currently like halfway done it. I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It is lovely. I 
I don't know if I'm getting every single word of it. I've just been like sitting there researching the queens and also I got really, really annoyed at the fact that every woman that portrays Catherine of Aragon is always way too old. And I found an even greater thing with Catherine Parr. So Catherine Parr is probably my favorite of the queens. She's super, super awesome. I absolutely love her. And she owes to my favorite song on the six as well. I started crying when I was listening to it, which says a lot about it. I, I love that she was the first woman who published a book under her own name in England. I love that she reinstated the queens and kind of with Anna of Cleves as well helped reinstate the women in the line of succession, which is really cool. If you guys have been around for a while, you know that I have one favorite thing for feminists, and they are all women who kind of sneakily get past men. This is a great story. Obviously, Henry VIII has killed two of his wives and annulled two of his wives, and one of his wives died, and she's the sixth wife, and he might even be going for a seventh, and she challenges him on religious matters and he puts out and warrant for her arrest and she finds it and she goes and prones herself before him and is like no sir i was not arguing because i thought you were wrong i was arguing so that you could teach me sir like i just needed your wisdom and of course henry has a huge ego and loves the fact that par is just telling him all of the things that he wants that he's so wise and teaching her and it's she's all docile and such and a man goes to arrest her the next day and henry's like no 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 she's good. Not only is Parr the one who survives, she's literally the one who talks him out of it. He killed two of his wives and annulled another two and like wouldn't speak to them and she managed to like slip into his quarters and just like manage to, you know, use him and like a woman who is able to sneakily use people who don't even realize that their power has blinded them is just, I love it so much. I love that she was married twice before and that she was married again, even though, you know, the guy ended up being real, real sketchy. And it, it bothers me that she is so often being just categorized as the nurse or as like this woman who is just like a docile helper to him in his old age. And that's why she was the longest of his wives married to him after Catherine of Aragon. She also often gets portrayed in her like mid to late 40s. So this started with Catherine of Aragon when I was like, why is people always putting her like 20 to 30 years older than Anne Boleyn when they're only 15 years apart? And she's only five years older than Henry, and so often Henry is portrayed as much younger. I try not to be a stickler in most things, but one of the things I am a stickler for is dates, and it drives me crazy when people have things that are really, really wrong, because people want to tell a story about Catherine of Aragon by making her older, and they want to tell a story by making Catherine Parr older. Not that older women, obviously, should not be viewed as these sexless beings that have no femininity, but that is what they're trying to do by portraying her as older. And it just doesn't make sense that on average, Catherine Parr is the averagely most oldest represented, even though she was only 30 when she became queen and was only 34 when he died. She married again and had her only child after his death. She was around the same age as Anne Boleyn and Jane Seymour around the times that they were his wives. I just realized I've been ranting about her for literally forever, but I have many, many feelings about Catherine Parr and maybe there'll be a video in the future because I have thoughts. But if you aren't familiar with Wolf Hall, it is the story of Thomas Cromwell and he is a man who is navigating himself into the mess that is currently the triangle between Anne Boleyn, Catherine of Aragon, and Henry, and the divorce, and the beating of the Church of England, and all of that, and it's super, super interesting. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. I definitely am not getting everything. It is a very dense book with a lot of history, and I heard someone writing, like, I was smart and went into this book after reading a biography, which I probably should have done. The humor is definitely there, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm interested in seeing the miniseries and finishing the series sometime in the future because I think that it's a series I will enjoy. Also one that I will reread at some point and probably get a lot more because I'm definitely not getting everything from this. I have now done what no cure has done before. I have read a book, a passage, a part from each of the authors that I chose for 2021. It was amazing. I read some poetry from this. I'm really enjoying it, especially the first one, which is So Many Girls, which I'm not really sure quite yet if She's going through kind of these desolate views in the way that women interact with the world and girls interact with the world and these common stories that are both highly unique and also universal or if she's telling one story. I really have to go through it. I'm quite tired at the time. I have my tea. I'm enjoying it. I am going to bed. It's like 8 p.m. and I am exhausted. But I have to finish a book by 
one of the greens. I am almost done with your scene reviewed and I am a good chunk into You Are the Artist, so hopefully I will finish those before the year. And I am actually really tempted because this is one of the, my favorite books. I have a copy of this. My friend Anna gave me this for my birthday because I requested it because I wanted a version of Herland, which is the story that I'm hoping to want, but I read some of her poetry and she's short stories here as well. Yellow Wallpaper is her most famous work, and this is a book that I stumbled upon in the beginning of 2018. I found it really, really fascinating. I found her mental health represented me in a way that I never thought, and yet... I also didn't realize it was horror, so by the end I was like horrified, and I have reread this story I think every single year. I read it in 2019, I read it in 2020, so if I read it this year, I will have read this every single year, and it's such a short story, and it's a book that matters to me, I feel like I should really go through and reread it again. The other book that since 2018 I have also read every single year is Dear Martin, and I have not done a reread yet. This is a story about a black teenager who is in his final year of school at a preparatory school, and he and his ex-girlfriend, who is half white, half black, and often white passing, are at a party and she tries to get into a car drunk and he tries to take her out of the car and take her to keys and he is arrested. It's a book I really, really love and a book that I've gotten more from and different parts of every single time. I read Dear Justice last December, which is a sequel and kind of looking at because the people that were talking to her were like, hey, Nick, like, it is a great story, but so often our stories about people who are black who are dealing with injustice are coming from the stories of people at prep schools who have made it out quote unquote and what about stories about us people who are actually in dissension censors we look at his friend who kind of had a different life story who was arrested for killing a cop and is in juvie currently and it was really good I, maybe i'll reread that one instead because i really loved it i do want to reread them and i had planned to reread them sometime in 2021 and that hadn't happened i'm really enjoying getting caught up on reading and i think this is where i'm gonna cap it i might have another small check-in but this is christmas eve christmas eve if you have a merry christmas tell me what books you reread for the season which books you read over christmas i don't do a lot of christmas reading but i enjoy reading some of the books that I, I tend to be a slow reader and read many books throughout the years and this is a time of year when I try to finish the physical books on my shelves and it is lovely because many of these are books are books that I love and I take a lot of care with so they're very slow but I love so much so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year I will see you before that